in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 11 says here that verse 2 it happened late one afternoon when David rose from his couch and was walking about on the roof of the king's house that he saw from the roof a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. David sent someone to inquire about the woman. It was reported this is Bathsheba, daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. So David sent messengers to get her. And she came to him and he lay with her. Now she was purifying herself after her period, which means that when she was taking her bath, she was without clothing. Then she returned to her house. The woman conceived and she sent and told David I'm pregnant. Coming to you from the subject, a father's role. A father's role. Let us pray. Eternal gracious love of God, we come to you in the name of our Lord and our Savior. Thanking you, Lord, for all that you've done. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do. Thank you, God, Lord, for all that you will do. Lord, we ask that you will allow your spirit to come now. Bring to us a word. Allow this your servant to decrease while you increase. Lord, let me be the mouthpiece. You be the speaker. Speak to me, speak through me, that, that your word may be known. And then Lord, take your word and penetrate it into the minds and hearts of each and every person, but especially our fathers. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and every heart say, Amen. I'm going to give you three points and I'm going to sit down. I want you to write these three points down. Point number one, keep sin out. Keep sin out. Point number two, spiritual leader of the house. Spirit leader of the house. Point number three. Fatherhood is not just planting the seed. Say that again. Fatherhood is not just planting the seed. Three points. Let me start with the first one. Keep sin out. <laughs> now, when we read this, it says that this woman was bathing. And she was taking a purifying bath. Which means she had just had her period and she was purifying herself. And women, y'all know what y'all have to do after that. That, that, that was it seven days? Five days, seven days? What is it? How many days? Three days? Well, I don't know. I, I never had it, so. And I ran when some other folk had it. So it varies. But anyway, there were two schools of thought concerning this situation. The first school is that is that is that Bathsheba, see Bathsheba's husband was Uriah the Hittite and he was a member of the Israel army. And back in those days, the king went out and fought the men. And so two schools of thought, school of thought number one is that, is that Bathsheba thought all the men was out at war and that she could bathe all natural and nobody would really see her. And that's what she thought. And so she didn't realize that the king was watching until the king sent for her. That's school of thought number one. School of thought number two 
is that Bathsheba may have love Fuchi in her. And that she might have actually known that the king was there. Maybe Uriah said, baby, I don't know what's up with the king, but he ain't fighting with us this time. Or maybe she has seen the king hanging out at the rooftop before and decided, you know, she might get some of his princely charm. And, 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 and the Bible tends to lean that way because, see, she never put up a fuss. She never said, well, well King, uh, you know I'm married to one of your soldiers. Uh, King, I just got through purifying myself and I'm, I'm quite capable of getting pregnant now. We should do. No, she didn't raise a fuss. It kind of reminded me of what happened with President Clinton. Now, I'll make sure I say Clinton because I don't know why you thinking I'm talking about Obama. I'm talking about Obama. I'm talking about President Clinton. And Monica Lewinsky and the Oval Office. <laughs> and some women, I remember talking to her and saying, Well, you know, that Monica Lewinsky, she just put us, she just brought herself upon the president. No, 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 no. See, I want you to understand what power over relationship is. What that means is this is that the president had undue influence over this woman. He had ability to, to set her career in motion. He did. Well, yeah. He <laughs> said he did. Okay. And what it means is that, see, is that, is that when you have one as a power over relationship with another person, it's sort of like the reason why grown men cannot have relationships with girls under a certain age, and call it statutory rape. What that means is that that girl does not have what it takes to make that qualifying decision to be with that man. And in that case, with Monica Whiskey, she has, he, a president has so much influence over her that it was not really an equal relationship. As is with this king and Bathsheba. This king had, had he had authority uh, over her husband in the army. He could, he could make, he could do anything. He could cause husband to die if he wanted to and get away with it. He's king. So there's really no equal relationship here. That's why they call it the power over relationship. Either way, what you have to understand is that is that is that it's up to the, the father of the house to do what is right. The king knew. The minute the king found out this woman was married, he should have stopped the process. Can't be with her. She's married. By going ahead and laying with this woman, knowing that she was married, regardless of whether she put herself on him or not. He was wrong, and he allowed sin in. Fathers, we have to keep sin out. We have to be like the sentry guard at the doorpost, and we got to keep sin out. That's our first role, is to keep sin out. Talk to Adam. What happened with Adam? See, God gave Adam the authority over everything that moved in the earth. Adam was given the authority. Why God then he let that woman eat that fruit? And why did he eat the fruit behind her? He was derelict in his duty. He removed himself from the door and he let sin in. David allowed sin in. And see, by David allowing sin in, let me tell you what happened. He caused problems for his children. Starting with the baby that Bathsheba got pregnant with. That baby suffered and that baby died. The baby suffered and the baby died. But that wasn't where the problems ended. David had three other children. Actually, a fourth one was born named Solomon, but I'll get to him in a minute. 
but had three other children, a daughter named Tamar, a son named Abner, and a son named Absalom. Now, 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 see, by allowing sin in, here's what can happen. In the case of Adam and Eve, then a brother named Cain kill a brother named Abel. See what happened? By him letting sin in, it can wreck your family. Men, if we are dereliction our duties in the church, we allow sin in to run rapid in our church. Men, we're supposed to be in charge. We're the spiritual leaders. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let me, let me back this train up a little bit. David's daughter Tamar was a beautiful woman. Abner, her half-brother, David's other son, decided he wanted to get a little freaky with his sister. And if you read the story, he told his sister he was sick and needed her to come take care of him. She came to take care of him and he, and he forced himself on the yeah, he raped her. Because she blew up a fuss. And then after he laid with her, he became disgusted with her and pushed her aside. Absalom found out and got mad. And for two years, he plotted revenge because of the shame he brought upon his sister. And he killed his brother, Amnon. Now, the very general, now, now if you read the story, David calls Uriah the Hittite to be killed in battle. Sent the letter to the general, Joab. Joab pulled back the forces, exposing Uriah. Uriah gets killed. Now the same Joab goes after, hunts down, and kills Absalom, who killed Amnon, who raped Tamar, all of which are David's children. I'm telling you right now, when you let sin in your household, Y'all ain't hearing me today. Oh, Lord have mercy. When you let sin in your household, it's like a cancer. It's like gangrene. It's like mold. It's like termites. It, the termites are just infested it, and it goes through and it, and it, and it kills and it destroys. He allows sin in and four of his children were destroyed and the fifth child went nuts. Y'all know Solomon went nuts. Says that the Bible boy went crazy. When you allow sin in, it can damage your relationships. It can damage your house. It can damage your church. That's why pastors should never have sexual relationship with members of their church. Single pastors leave them girls alone. Single female pastors leave the boys alone. We cannot allow men don't have no women on the side. Men at another church, not this church. I don't know about you. Who we talking about? Talking about somebody? No, I ain't talking about nobody here. This time. Matter of fact, the man I'm talking about is dead. Was an officer in the church. Helped build the church. All that time had a woman on the side. Can you do that? Maybe we have to be the spiritual leaders. And to be the spiritual leader, our role is to keep sin out of our house and out of his house. We set the tone for what is normal in the household. I saw something yesterday that touched my heart. Sister, the first lady and I went to visit my son and his family. Start out at 12 noon to watch the youngest grandboy play baseball. Out there, my son 
coach at third base. And at that age, a coach pitch when, when the team is out of the field, the coach can be out of the field, my son is out of the field. Later on, we, we got back to the house and my son and I tossing balls to the oldest child. It reminded me, I coached my son in baseball. I was my son's third base coach. I taught my son how to play the outfield, how to catch the ball and throw the ball. I taught him how to swing a bat. I, and, and then later on, yesterday, we were in my son's karate class. Twenty-some odd kids, three of his kids in karate. I taught my son karate, and I saw, I saw it passed on. See, I set normalcy in the household. It's normal for my son. My son didn't think twice about the fact he would teach his kids, and he would be acting in his kids' life. See, see, my father wasn't that active in my life, and his father wasn't that active. But I broke the curse. I praise God that He allowed me to break the curse. I'm, I'm telling you right now, we have to set what is normal expectation. We got to teach our boys how to treat their women. We got to treat, teach the girls how to be treated by the man. You can't go down the girl upside the head because see, you, you, your, your, your sons are watching you. I remember this commercial where the father. He's yelling at his son. The son was caught with some marijuana. And the father said, What you doing? You can't, where you get this from? Did they say I got it from you? <laughs> we set the tone for what is normal in the household. We also set the tone for worship. I never forget. Church I grew up in, a man named the Meachams, Mr. James Meacham, Sam Meacham is there, Mr. Sam Meacham, Mr. Sam Meacham, I mean, they him and Miss Meacham had about nine, ten kids, Sunday school, the Meachams and them kids be at Sunday school, Bible study, the Meachams and them kids be in, and, and choir rehearsal, the Meachams and them kids, he couldn't sing a note, but he'd be sitting in the audience watching them in choir rehearsal. I remember at Mr. Meacham's funeral, Reverend Seller said, Mr. Meacham didn't send his children to church. Mr. Meacham brought his children to church. He set the tone as a spiritual leader. Now, Mr. Meacham couldn't contradict a verb. He couldn't read, he couldn't do that. But Mr. Meacham was in church. Every Sunday. We set the tone for worship. We set the tone for Bible study. I don't see enough of our men in Bible study in Sunday school. Okay, Reverend, now you tripping. Okay, let me tell you why I'm not tripping. If you got your word, go to Deuteronomy chapter 6. I'm going to show you why I'm not tripping. Deuteronomy chapter 6, I'm going to start with, I'm going to read verse 1 through 3, and then verse 6 through 9. I want you to hear me. Now, this is the commandment, the statutes and ordinances that the Lord your God charged me to teach you to observe in the land that you are about to cross into and occupy, so that you and your children and your children's children may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life, and keep all his decrees and his commandments that I am commanding you so that your days may be long. Hear therefore, Israel, and observe them diligently, so that it may go well with you, and so that you may multiply greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you. Now, let me, let me set this up for you. If you read chapter 5 through Deuteronomy, he just laid out the Ten Commandments. Now, let, 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 let me roll this out for you. Verse 6. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children. And talk about them when you're at home and when you are away. When you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand. Fix them as an emblem on your forehead. Write them on your door, on the doorpost of your house and on your gate. 
gates. He is saying, study the commandments. Study the word. Recite them at home. Are you teaching your children the word of God? He didn't say something to the preacher man.
He didn't have to figure out where his daddy was. I was there. He acted up to school. Daddy was there. I didn't wait on Sister Jackie to go get his grits. I got his grits. I went and saw his principal. I went and saw his teacher. I'm his daddy. I didn't just plant no seed. I harvest the crop so I can stand and be proud of what I saw yesterday. I can stand and be proud of one son got a math working on his master's degree. Another son is in another city working on his career. Both of college graduates. I can stand and be proud because I stood there when they were born. I stood there when they raised hands.
Lord, I just pray you'll continue to bless us and keep us. Remind us each day of our role in your house and our house. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and every heart say, Amen. The doors of our church are open. Man, I want you to come, all men, come and stand next to our stewardesses as we receive potential folk who may want to join this church. I want as many men who can. If you got knee problems, I understand. But if you can walk and, and all that stuff, come on down and stand next to our stewardesses. I want, I want our men involved. I want our men to stand. Our men are our leaders. Young boys, you come as well. Ron, Keith, y'all come on too. All the young men and older men, come on down and stand next to our stewardesses. We open the doors of the church. If it is your desire to become a member of this church, this is your opportunity to do so. If you have not joined, but you're up here, you can join church today. What a great and glorious way to honor your Father than to accept Jesus your Lord and Savior. Amen. Praise the Lord. When I know I am no good and I Get 
Get them out here without your house. Get them out here without the church. One, now just think what all of us can do together. Amen. Come on, choir. Let's walk on out together. Praise God. Let us stand.